Lara Logan from Lara Logan uh, Has No Agenda, lara-logan.com, uh, joins us uh, now. What is this, what am I looking at and what does this tell you, Lara? What you're looking at is extremely significant, that is for sure. We don't know everything about it. It raises um, very important questions. And I have, a, I have a feeling, it's a gut feeling, but this was not accidental. The time period here is very specific. And that, to me, is deliberate. Because, look, and it's a critical time period, right? It's after the election mm -hmm. and uh, prior to the inauguration. That's the, the, the period that, that is, um, you know, sort of under investigation anyway. That's under the spotlight. And what you're actually looking at is these are people, these are uh, people who hold a security clearance, who are logging into a secure government computer using their um, given identity. It cannot be assigned to someone else. It cannot be used by somebody else. It's yours. You sign a legal document that says it's yours. And under Title 50, which governs, uh, that's the law that governs in intelligence and all the information we gather as our intelligence agencies gather it as a country. And under that, um, it, it log this is a direct link. This is what you call incontrovertible evidence that these people did request this information on that date. They've got much more information so, than this. Me, but this is a, basically a roadmap. And now these people have to answer questions. Why would the ambassador to Italy need this? Um, we have the ambassador to the United Nations. She requested unmasking one, two, three, four, five, six different times. We have uh, six separate people from the Treasury Department asking uh, for it to be unmasked. Why? In this, is this unusual that this many people would be uh, asking for a name to be unmasked? It, it, um, it certainly seems to be extraordinarily unusual. This many people in a short amount of time, and I'll tell you why. Because um, the reason that name is masked is because the United States government at the time did not have a legitimate basis to investigate Michael Flynn. And this is, that's the same standard, that's the legal standard for every single U.S. citizen. They have uh, the authority, counterintelligence monitors every foreign diplomat on U.S. soil. But what they don't have the authority, the legal authority to do, is to monitor U.S. citizens um, without a legal basis to do so. So it's standard procedure to mask the identity of every U.S. citizen that you, um, that you they, they call it incidental collection, right? right? That person is not the object of your surveillance. The ambassador would have been the object of the surveillance. So my Michael Flynn's name is collected incidentally. And in order to violate his Fourth Amendment rights, you have to have a justification for that. Specifically, you need it in order to understand the intelligence. And um, when you do so, it's supposed to be very specifically and narrowly defined by that issue and to the people who need to know that information. Any person that goes on television or whose name goes into print saying that unmasking happens all the time, this is standard procedure, nothing to see here, move on, that is 100% an admission of guilt. Somehow, that individual is complicit in the cover-up that's going on here, because it is a lie. It's, it is 100% not true. It's a felony. If you, if you, you have to go in, be secure, have that name, read it, that's for your eyes only. If you reveal it or leak it and it gets out, when these people are saying, I've talked yes. to some sources that say blah, 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 that's a felony. That's a felony. And this is yes. what this is supposed to lead us to are those people that were leaking those names. And, Glenn, you made the point, Samantha Power, right, the, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. How many unmaskings are, requests are there here? November 30th, December 2nd, December 7th, December 14th, two requests on that day, December 23rd, January 11th. I point you to this one particularly. Why? Because, don't take my word for it or your word, right, no disrespect, but who are we? Go to Samantha Power's testimony under oath when she had a legal obligation to tell the truth. What did the transcript say? She is asked repeatedly, why did you do this? And do you recall doing it? And she says, I never did it. I don't know what you're talking about. That wasn't me. 
oh, well, okay, so that means there's a crime that's taken place here. I'm not accusing Samantha Power of anything, but if she did not know who was signing in with her secure identity and making these requests, which are, they are top secret because they are of such sensitivity, because they relate to the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution and our um, right to privacy as citizens, as Americans, and someone was misusing that, to the point, I mean, look at this. Yeah. Look at this. She never said, I didn't do it this time, but I did it another day. She said, I never did it at all. That means, oh, wait, I can tell you how many crimes were committed under her entry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven crimes right there. Was it the same person? Was it seven different people? Those are the questions that somebody has to answer, and not just answer, okay? And there's all this nonsense that I keep hearing. We just need a day of reckoning. We just need people to come clean. No, we don't. We don't. We need the rule of law to be upheld so that everyone knows that this is a country where the rule of law is respected.